In this video, I'm going to talk about the use of a rule known as conditional elimination. Now, conditional elimination is a rule that goes by different names depending upon the system that you're working in. Sometimes it's referred to as modus ponens, and so it's referred to, you know, ex expressed as simply MP for modus ponens. In other systems, it's referred to as affirming the antecedent. But here, I'll talk about it as conditional elimination. But in all of these systems, even though it has different names, it's the same rule. The rule is that if you have a conditional if P then Q and the antecedent of that conditional P, then you can derive Q. That is, if you have a conditional where that consists of, let's say, a formula P and a formula Q, where P and Q are just variables or placeholders for any formula in the language of propositional logic, and you have the formula P as sort of separate formula standing on its own, then you can derive the consequent of the conditional, which is Q. So we can express this as saying P right arrow Q, P therefore Q. It's important to note that what conditional elimination does not say is it does not say that if we have a conditional if P then Q, we can derive Q straight away. This is not what's being asserted. It's saying that you need two expressions to derive the consequent of the conditional. It states that you have the conditional, if P then Q, and you have the antecedent of the conditional on its own line. And from this, you can derive the consequent of the conditional on a new line. So it's important to note that conditional elimination, in order to make use of this particular rule, you need two formulas, one, the conditional, and the second formula, must be the formula that comes to the left of the arrow here. So you notice how these two formulas match, and if those two formulas match, then you can reason to the formula that is to the right of the arrow. Conditional elimination corresponds to how we might reason in everyday life using if-then statements. So let's take an expression like if I smile at you, at you, and let's say that then, so if, then, if I smile at you, then you'll smile at me. Okay, so conditional elimination states that we can reason to that you will smile at me, provided we, one, have the conditional, if I smile at you, then you'll smile at me, and we have the antecedent of that conditional on its own line or a, as a separate sentence. So let's say I do smile at you. I smile at you. There we go. I smile at you. Conditional elimination states that if th this conditional is true and this sentence right here is true, where you'll note that this second sentence is the antecedent of the conditional, so I will smile at you, is right here, it's part of the conditional, and then here we have it as a separate line. We can affirm that this is the case, we've kind of determined that I did smile at you. Then from all this, we can reason that if I smile at you, then you'll smile at me. Well, I did smile at you, so if both of these are true, then it follows by conditional elimination that you will smile at me. Now this above reasoning here corresponds to how we would reason using the formal system. If we let if I smile at you represent that with a P and we say then you will smile at me. If we say we're going to represent you smiling at me with a Q and this sort of conditional right here, this if then statement using the arrow, so if P then Q. And since we said that the, me smiling at you, we represented with a P, and we said that you smiling at me, we represented at Q. What we have here is essentially P right arrow Q, or P if, if P then Q, P, and we are reasoning to Q using condition, the rule conditional elimination. Let's look at a particular example. Suppose we have the entailment if Z then R, Z and P entails R. One way to look at this particular entailment is to say, look here, we have a conditional right here, 
And then in this conjunction, we have the antecedent of this conditional. And so if we could isolate this z, if we could get this z on its own separate line, then we could reason if z then r, z entails r using conditional elimination. And that's essentially what we would do in order to provide the derivation. That is, we would first isolate this z on its own line using a different rule that we've introduced in an earlier video, which is conjunction elimination. We say z and p entail z, and now that we have a conditional z if z then r and we have the antecedent of that conditional we have z on its own separate line right here we can derive r so we have if z then r at line one and z at line three and so we can make use of lines one and three as well as the conditional elimination rule to derive the formula that we want to be the last line of our derivation, which is r. One, kind of, one final point worth mentioning is that when we, even though conditional elimination is formulated as if you have a conditional, if p then q, and p then you can entail q, these p's and q's are simply placeholders or variables for any propositional logic well-formed formula. So these P's and Q's can be any formula that we want. So to give an example of a more complex use of conditional elimination, we would be making use of conditional elimination if we had, let's say, if P then Q, um, or not R entails, let's say, not S. And if we had the entire antecedent of this conditional, that is if we had this whole antecedent on its own separate line, then we could drive not S. If we had if P and Q or not R on its own line, then we would be using conditional elimination with line one here, two here, to since we have the entire antecedent of the conditional to derive not s.